KK flips the script. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I think sex scenes in movies are whack. More often than not. Every time I see a sex scene that really has no purpose or no relation to the actual plot, like it's just, it's like exhibition, right? It's just like, why are we getting this extra screen time of this moment playing out? If it's not advancing anything, it's just taking away time for you to actually tell a good story. So, I thought long and hard. I went ahead and put a list together. My six cinematic sex scenes of substance. It's quite a tongue twister. Let's get into the list, starting with number six. I simply am not there. If you haven't seen American Psycho, then, I mean, what are you even doing on here? Click off here and go watch it. You won't regret it. I have to return some videotapes. I feel like the sex scenes, particularly the first one, and especially the last one, I think those were the only two sex scenes in the film, actually, they were there to highlight Patrick Bateman's narcissism. We know through hearing his thoughts and that commentary going through his mind throughout the whole film that he is not all the way there, that he is violent, that he is ready to blow, that he is neurotic, that he is a psychopath and he's following this journey into actually going full-blown psycho psychotic so it's interesting I don't know if you know it's particularly arousing to anyone but it just makes you laugh that's what I love about that film totally it's just different because it goes from very funny and satirical to very gruesome you see him like plowing these prostitutes and then flash to the next scene, you think they're done, but then he's getting ready to torture these women. I mean, if you've seen the movie, you already know how it goes down. So I think in that instance, it actually uses sex scenes not only to drive the story, but to also paint a really good picture about the guy we're dealing with. Now, number five. I'm excited and I feel relaxed and I'm ready to party. Of course, one of like the best comedies has come out in the past two decades. It is a certified classic. They utilize a sex scene in the perfect way that actually makes sense to the story. If you've seen Bridesmaids, you remember that opening scene. And that opening scene basically sets the tone for the film. You know it's gonna be comedic because the sex scene is not sexy at all. It is hilarious. Number four. Four is my favorite number. This is messy. You are messy. Your brain is broke. Have fun, be safe, wear condoms. One of my favorite films of the year and I actually made a video about it. You guys should go check that out. But the reason why I added Zola to this list is because there is a scene showing um, our prostitute Dave Stephanie, who is Zola's counterpart and also kind of her antagonist, um, basically doing her job. She is at work. Um, she's finding her clientele on Craigslist and naming her price, which Zola helps her up her price, right? And the clients come up. But what's so great about these sex scenes in particular is that they're not sexy at all. And I think they show probably prostitution in a more realistic light than you see in these other movies because they make it seem like these prostitutes are just in love with these men that are paying them for sex. But it's like, no, they take all that fluff out of it. The room is well lit. And I love how the camera is just focused on what the men are doing. So you see them moving you barely see any of stephanie you see their private parts it kind of zooms in on their facial expression uh. <laughs> and there goes the whole scene where you see these guys rolling in and out of the room very transactional very sterile nothing sexy about it and i really appreciated that because it just felt like they weren't trying to make it something ooh like uh, that is not this is just, you know, men willing to pay money for a service. And I thought it was brilliant, which is why I added to this list, because it serves a story. All right, so number three. You awake? What are you doing? You're not going to believe me, and I need you to remember what I'm saying. This thing, it's going to follow you. Somebody gave it to me, and I passed it to you. I'm just gonna say it outright right now. It's one of my favorite horror movies. The reason why I added it to this countdown in particular is because sex is what drives the whole plot. Sex is the catalyst and sex is why these kids are being murdered off left and right. They're 
you know, knocking boots, uh, what have you, and it's passing on this curse from this spirit, which is manifesting as naked people and uh, attacking them one by one. Unless, unless they have sex with somebody else and then that person keeps the curse on them until the curse catches up with them and then it goes back to the person that had sex with them. I know it sounds confusing, you just gotta watch it. We've seen sex invoked in horror films before and it usually means that somebody's gonna die. You know, the virgin rule that's mentioned in Scream. But in this case, it kind of, it kind of takes that to a level 10 and I think that's what's so brilliant about it. And that's what makes it so fun to watch. No. He was a good kid. You know, he was a really good kid. Yeah. He was so good. He was, he really, he loved me. He really, he really loved me. Now, as you may have noticed up until this point on the list, um, there have been a lot of random genres mentioned that you normally don't equate with sex or having sex scenes. Um, that being said, number two is a standout and one of those exceptions to the rule uh, as far as I'm concerned. An iconic sex scene, of course, Academy Award winning, but the reason why this sex scene was actually put into this list for me personally, I thought it was just because how they shot the scene and also the context of the scene. It wasn't two people trying to show their love for each other and that first, you know the one, the make me feel good, you know, yeah, you know that one. It wasn't about that. In the moment, these are two people grieving. It's worth watching if you haven't seen it. It is mo one of the most hands down depressing movies I've ever seen. And it's just sad. But that's how most dramas are, you know? They're supposed to be big bummers, but they're supposed to be entertaining as well and heart-wrenching and just kind of, you know, they rough you up a bit. But where it stands out is its sex scene was very unique and had a purpose. I'm talking no music. No, no music in the midst of that scene. I'm talking, oh, it looked realistic. It just looked, you know, it didn't look pretty. It, it wasn't glossed up. It just, this is what it is. We're just getting this out because we are sad and we want to feel good. Like literally, they want to feel, I want to feel good. So you're watching this scene and then in the midst of it, Halle Berry's character releasing a bird. I think her name was like Letitia, but she like, you know, she has a bird in a cage and she's releasing it. I was like, oh, like so it's a little, a little symbolism in there, but it was very artistically done. And it was just, realistic enough and kind of visceral enough for you to really enjoy it and appreciate it because it could have easily come off as oh we know why they put that in there and that might still be true but in the context of the movie and just that scene in particular it just is a very powerful scene and for one thing it's just because all you can do is focus on that and Halle Berry and Billy Bob Thornton they just did that throughout the whole movie they did too but in that scene in particular it was just you just can't take your eyes off of it. You just can't. Number one, Basic Instinct, 1992. I'd have to be pretty stupid to write a book about killing and then kill somebody the way I described it in my book. I'd be announcing myself as the killer. I'm not stupid. We know you're not stupid, Mr. Trumel. Maybe that's what you're counting on to get you off the hook. Writing the book gives you an alibi. Yes, it does, doesn't it? The answer is no. I didn't kill him. This film sets it off right off the bat. First scene. You see a man laying down on his bed. You see a woman getting on top. And then she pulls out like this silk rag and then she's like, you know, gently but then like rough, like tying his arms to the bedpost. And he's just lying there like, mm, mm, mm. and then she's going, she's going, she's going. And then she grabs that ice pick and just starts stabbing him, stabbing him, stabbing him, stabbing him. It's just a bloody mess everywhere. And you're wondering throughout the film, who is this woman? And you get an idea of who she is. You think it's Catherine, who is Sharon Stone's character. You're for sure it's her, but you're still not sure because they, were, they start showing all these other murderous blondes who could have killed this man at the beginning of the story. And then our, of course, very flawed protagonist, who is a detective played by Michael Douglas named Nick. And he is very attracted to Sharon Stone's character, but also he believes that she is the prime suspect. But then you also follow his personal life and his sexual interactions. Of course, you know, probably very inappropriate. And I get an understanding of who his character is in that scene. And then the sex scenes that follow, 
that involve Catherine and this detective, you're like, oh my gosh, is she gonna kill him? Because in the first scene, it's that, it's that like the precedent, like, oh, they're gonna get all erratic, it's gonna get all hot, it's blonde, we think it's Catherine, is she gonna kill this guy now? Like, and all throughout the movie, like, you, you see a scene, you're like, oh, she gonna pull it out, oh, she gonna, uh. And, you know, that's just, I thought it was like a brilliant use of the act, is to kind of, not just, not just the sex, but then also what was promised, like, in the first scene. Like, are we gonna see a murder go down yet again? I, I mean, I might be, you know, I might be just talking out my ass, but I feel like you see that influences in films that have come since then, particularly in Gone Girl, where you see Amazing Amy stabbing Neil Patrick Harris's character in the neck, and then he bleeds out, and then she gets on top of him, and then continues to stab him, and then holds him down until he bleeds out. Like, like something about that, I don't know. Like, that kind of imagery just says a lot about the female character, how violent they could be, and in this case, this character, Catherine, is basically the female version of Nick in a way. Going down that rabbit hole. You now two dark characters, two sides of the same coin. Thought it was brilliant, especially when you add in the sex. And that's it. I think that's, that about sums it up. My top six cinematic sex scenes with substance. Top six, top six sex scenes with substance. <sighs> now, uh, homework. If you can find any other films that I did not mention on this list that definitely qualify, where they have a sex scene that helps explore a character or um, progress an actual storyline, please, please, please send it my way. I know there's more and I'm just not thinking about, but those are the ones that kind of stuck out to me top of mind that just did an excellent job at, at uh, making sex work, you know? Not giving us the old regular degular. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, and let me know if you've seen any of these films or if you're going to check them out. I'd love to hear all about it. Bye!